The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting day at TFN. Because I'm back. I'm back in the saddle again. And, uh, of course, as always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, hopefully it's uh, everything is working out. A few technical issues just barely made it on the air on time. But uh, the whole Internet, it doesn't always cooperate. And the old Internet just isn't what she used to be. Anyway, uh, what do we have has uh, been gone for a little while. We're back. Uh, 29.7383 is the last tick I see out here for the S&P 500. Down 77 on the Dow. NASDAQ's up 28. Russell's off uh, five, almost six points. Uh, again, uh, eh, waited to come back until we get Mr. Fed doing his little dance on the catwalk. On the catwalk. Mr. Powell when his dance on the catwalk uh, tomorrow at uh, starting around 10 a.m. Probably should see a little action, maybe about 10 minutes before that on prepared statements. So uh, we'll open at 930, have about 20 minutes of uh, hurry up and wait, and then we'll see what his comments actually say. Uh, he'll also have testimony again on Thursday with the Senate, uh, but uh Eh, probably not going to change his tune from Wednesday to Thursday. So we'll have a lot to look at uh, tomorrow morning and uh, probably right on into the afternoon. So far today, uh, we did uh, go lower earlier in the day, 3.3 uh, uh, billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. Uh, when we look at that, uh, you also want to look at um, what volume was yesterday. And again, we pulled back on fairly light volume. So there's not a good sign so far of any kind of long-term uh, signal change when we look at the, well, in fact, why don't we just do it instead of me allude to it. Um, when we look at the uh, summation chart for the uh, NYSE, which is kind of the best medium-term signal, uh, the the um, trend is still up in the summation index. So we don't have a real clue there. Um, we didn't have a lot of people piling on short at the highs. So if generally when you get that, you get a couple of days of squeeze after it. It was a little bit more the last couple of days. Yeah, but you know, put call ratio in the VIX was in the 60s, which is not. I mean, I like to see something in the 80s at 90 and you get an instant reversal and within the next two trading days. Didn't get that. Uh, did get a little turn down in the 5 and 10% on the summation indexes and did kind of roll off. Uh, but the damage, fairly minor so far in the broader indexes. Of course, the NASDAQ moves a great deal more than anything else. So uh, if we look around, uh, are we getting real clues anywhere else? Dollar index is right back into the 97s, 97.088 uh, uh, on the last tick for that. So I don't see a great deal happening there. Um, crude, uh, eh, 57.83, it should start rolling off as uh, tension uh, kind of abate a little bit. Uh, gold right at $1,450, or 1450 cents, excuse me, silver, 15 dollars and 14 cents so again a lot of hurry up and wait as we uh, get into the fed we'll look at uh, a lot of charts that we've had but uh you know when you're either wanting to go short or long generally the market's fairly good at trying to draw you off sides a little football reference there for those folks in uh in uh a small town in florida um but uh, that's about it. The I, I think we're going to get some kind of spike tomorrow, probably in the opposite direction of the market 
I would not be surprised to see it go up there, ring the bell uh, on 3,000 on the S&P cash and roll over waiting uh, to get back into earnings, which really kind of start you know, a little bit later this week, but really not going to be anything big till next week. So a lot of hurry up and wait, no real signals. Uh, we've got a lot of charts though, that if we did get a signal are going to be very interesting. And that's what we're looking at today. Uh, no action quite yet, but we'll talk about how the setup uh, is working. Uh, we did it uh, back in May and got fairly close within about a day or two, I think, of uh, finding the high back then. I think we've got a, a fairly good opportunity. Uh, the problem continues to be that uh, I don't like trying to short highs when everybody is uh, rather uh, uh, dour. And uh, yeah, one of our uh, friends in the den told me uh, of the uh, very, very negative waves that uh, the fast money traders were putting on the market. And uh, they've been pretty wrong. So I'm thinking, well, man, if they were just euphoric and ready to say buy, 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 I, you know, I'd think, well, maybe we've got some kind of top in. But generally, you don't have a big top in. When everybody's looking at their shoes, trying to find some uh, a little hole in the ground to put their big toe, uh, anything but looking at the sky and saying uh, it's blue and the sky will be blue forever. None of that. All everybody crying in their beers. And again, don't get many highs when everybody's looking at the ground. You get them all when they're all euphoric. And uh, hey, if there's any kind of secret to the market, it's pretty much uh, looking at the opposite side of it. I always uh, love that uh, song, I've Seen Fire, I've Seen Rain by James Taylor, mostly because uh, it's his life of being manic and depressive. Uh, I just don't see the fire. I see a lot of rain at the highs, but that's generally not the way it works. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. You can also put a message in the den. I think a lot of people are getting ready and fired up for the big game, which starts 10 a.m. in the morning. But uh, until then, uh, we should gird our loins. Got much mail about that last time I said it. And uh, get ready. Because, again, market's pretty good at uh, drawing people off sides. And uh, you kind of have to wait for the whites of their eyes. Of course, uh, I'm going to walk away with a mixed metaphor award again at the TFNN office party uh, and the digression award. I, I seem to absolutely be able to take both of those every single year without anybody even coming close. And the rest of the hosts of TFNN. Uh, no Girding loins, yes, I know. Anyway, uh, what do we got else got we going on? Oh, we're going to the break. When we come back, we've got a little bit of history. We're going to get right on to some charts and see how they're acting going into the Fed tomorrow morning because I think uh, we've got some balls teed up. Get the right kind of action tomorrow. Be back after this short, infinitely short timeout. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Uh, oh, let's do a little history and then we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Well, it, uh, it doesn't really repeat, but it does rhyme. On this day in 1941, Cracker Jack, British cryptolo uh, cryptologist, break the secret code used by the German army to direct ground-to-air operations in the Eastern Front. Of course, um, a lot of people get their history from movies today, and it's not very accurate. Uh, they tried to lay all the uh, uh, wins for uh, breaking the cryptologist's or the uh, crypto stuff with the Enigma machine uh, at the uh, foot of one man's door. It was uh, a much bigger uh, thing than the movie produced. In fact, uh, they got a machine uh, from the Polish uh, when the uh, country was overrun that actually broke the Enigma uh, codes at that time. Um, so it wasn't anything new. Uh, when they changed the codes, though, uh, it took a little while for these guys to come back. But uh, a lot of uh, hand-wringing for politically correct reasons in the movie. Uh, but uh, most people actually miss the guy that was probably more important than anybody else. And uh, his name was Tommy Flowers. Guy worked in a... Uh, uh, worked for the post office making sorting machines, and uh, he actually pretty much came up with the first programmable computer uh, that uh, ran on paper tape, holes in tape, and uh, he actually worked on a generation behind the Enigma called the what they called Tunny. They had uh, the the English operation in Bletchley Park all worked. Uh, and had code names for all the different codes that all had to do with fish. No reason why. But I think once they named one a fish, it became all the others. I guess Tunny is some kind of fish. I bet it doesn't look good. There aren't a lot of good-looking fish. I mean, you got to you got to give it to the shark. Pretty looking, good-looking fish. I mean, maybe a little scary, but good-looking. Uh, but they got a lot of them down there that look like they've been beat with the ugly stick. Uh, anyway, this was uh, built on a typewriter, originally employed for business purposes back in 1919. 
Uh, and like I said, probably the best uh, and all the core work was done uh, by Polish experts. And uh, they seemed to get slighted not only in the movie, but in history, too. They showed how it was all done. Uh, in 1941, everybody wants to say that it was because of the machines uh, that were made, and it was not. What they did was came, came up a way to actually crack it using pieces and strips of paper. No two um, letters could be back to back, and that was one of the flaws of the machine. So all you had to do is take big, long uh, messages and slide them uh, above and below um, these pieces of paper. And if you had two that repeated themselves, you had a way to break the code. Wasn't easily, but you could break it by hand. Uh, earlier in 1941, by 1943, of course, they thought that maybe it had been broken and update, updated the machine with uh, another actual wheel to make it, uh, well, logarithmically harder to do. And that's when Mr. Uh, Tommy Flowers uh, from the uh, post office, um, who made machines and understood how to design them, a very smart man in his own right, designed the machine uh, that would uh, actually crack Hitler's own codes that were kind of more like tel radio teletype. Uh, they weren't anybody actually just putting Morse code down. But, uh, very interesting time, and I, I think maybe why I'm so interested in it is because uh, everybody would say that it, everything in uh, those codes were random. Well, they're mostly random, but not random. There was pattern in the chaos, and every day when we show up, to work in the stock market, we're looking for that pattern in the chaos. Uh, chaotic is not random. It just appears to be. There's generally an underlying system that uh, drives everything. And on this day in 1941, um, pretty uh, far along to winning the war because we were reading all of their messages. Um, oh, I wanted to, why did I do that? I needed to, I wanted to go on that. Why I was gone, uh, there was some interesting stuff going on. Uh, come on. There we go. Uh, going on uh, with AMD into Friday and actually into Sunday. Uh, we'll take a look at the chart here in a minute. Um, no, I didn't get this right. So I'll take that off and put on a chart of AMD. Um AMD has gotten incredibly price aggressive uh, against uh, Intel on the chips. Uh, they've gotten also fairly aggressive in pricing uh, against NVIDIA. Uh, while Intel, uh, at least for gaming, the high-end desktop CPU is still just slightly better than the uh, just released uh, Ryzen 3000. Um, it's priced, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks cheaper than it. Uh, it uh, a lot of people are making some wild claims over the weekend. Uh, by today, those things are starting to turn down. But uh, if you're not, if you don't have to have absolutely the absolute best and can uh, and probably take 95% as good, AMD has released a processor that is uh, uh, making some feathers ruffle. Uh, AMD has always been the uh, poor man's chip when you didn't have money to buy Intel. Up to the, uh, last week, that was pretty much true. Uh, they also dropped the prices against NVIDIA's new products that just came out. Uh, and NVIDIA is down. Not a lot of juice so far. Uh, but NVIDIA came out with some new um, upgraded versions of existing cards. Uh, and of course, uh, NVIDIA makes a, a pretty large sum on those video cards. And AMD, kind of second banana in uh, processors, kind of second banana uh, in video cards. Um, cards are actually much better, but uh, they're getting very aggressive on pricing. And the question is, uh, when you drop your margins like that, is are things going to work out? Now, NVIDIA has taken a product that sold well over the last year uh, and been head and shoulders above uh, AMD for their video cards. And I think they still are from everything that I've read and seen for that. Uh, but uh, AMD came out 
and just before they released their video cards this weekend, dropped them all pretty much 50 bucks to compete with NVIDIA. So the question is, uh, at least on AMD's front, will they see a drop in uh, margins come next time and the street punish them? Because generally, that's what the street does. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, okay. Uh, so that we looked at NVIDIA, we looked at AMD. Let's take a quick look at Intel. It's been on a downtrend for a little while. Um, these guys are in problems. And like I said, when the new CEO came in, I did not like him at all. And I don't think anything's better. I think you still have an opportunity to see this back at just under 43 bucks in the near future. We'll be back in a moment. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates to my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And breaking news now, uh, Lighthouser Muchen spoke with the Chinese Vice Premier um, this morning, apparently maybe last night, but uh, news is breaking now. Uh, pushing the market up just a little, we're back to flat. Uh, 29.75.66 on the S&P cash, down 68 on the Dow, NASDAQ's still up 33, Russell's off five. So continue to see probably the Russell a little weak as long as trade news comes in fairly well, but uh, at least, uh, I don't know if it's forward progress, at least uh, no uh, negative 
progress uh, in the trade talks at the moment. Uh, let's see if there's anything else going on. Let's take a quick look. See if there's anything else happening. I don't see anything. Let's see if the volume is updated. And again, light volume on this pullback last yesterday, and it's going to be light today for the push down. But uh, three and a half billion shares, so volume very light. Uh, we were talking about earnings and had a couple questions about that. And um, let's see, what do we have? Well, we have after the bell tonight, WD40 and Levi Strauss. Those aren't going to move the markets. Uh, tomorrow when we get up in the morning, and eh, nothing happening there. Bed, bath, and below after the bell tomorrow night. I don't think that's going to move anything. We go into Thursday. That's it with Delta Airlines. Uh, but again, I don't think that's going to move the market very much either. Uh, and then uh, we go basically into next week. Info systems uh, come Monday morning of next week. Um, and then you take a whole bunch of days. Uh, we finally get some bigger stocks like Citigroup on the 15th. That's the morning of the 15th. Um, J.B. Hunt uh, after the bell on that 15th. Again, very light and spotty. Then it becomes the big deal, and that is the 16th of this month. We get J.P. Morgan Goldman. Sachs, uh, Wells Fargo, Johnson & Johnson, Dub, uh, Domino's Pizza. So that's really where we're going to start seeing the, the big movement. After that, Bell on uh, the 16th, CSX, uh, United Continental, Centos, Interactive Brokers, handful of those things. But uh, it kind of goes, you know, right from there, you get into the 17th, you got Bank of America, Abbott Labs, Comerica, uh, Ericsson, Bank of uh, New York, Textron. So, again, not the kind of monstrous moves, but certainly ones that make you think stuff's going on. Thursday the 18th, you want to write that down if you're in tech. It's Microsoft, Intuitive Surgical, Capital One, Financial. Those are all after the bell. Uh, then we go into uh, that Friday the 19th with Cleveland Cliffs. BlackRock, Kansas City Southern, American Express, Schlumberger, and really that is kind of the, uh, even though they're not huge uh, in market moving capability, they are in a bit. So uh, look for, uh, what do we got? 10 days? Yeah. Eight to 10 days uh, to really get moving. So tomorrow is going to be a big deal because we don't really have a lot of news that's going to move the market other than that until we get into uh, mid of next week. So uh, get ready for all the action. As uh, most pilots will tell you, uh, the big deal is that it's hours and hours of boredom with seconds of sure terror. And I think that's what we've got coming up um, at least a little bit for tomorrow. Uh, and then, of course, when we get to earnings, I think there's going to be some fairly, uh, a lot of people off sides, and they're going to be drawn off sides. Got a good question in the den and in the uh, email. Uh, did, did, uh, Facebook uh, both running up toward uh, 2018 highs. Uh, do you see that happening? Yeah, I don't see anything. Uh, again, Facebook, Amazon both uh, are going, you're just going to wake up one day. You're not going to know the day. And you're going to see that there was some kind of action about antitrust issues uh, and Facebook uh, probably getting hauled in front of the European courts. Uh, they're not taking uh, Facebook uh, at their word. And, of course, uh, Facebook, uh, although they're throwing a lot of money around for the election, uh, don't think they have enough to buy off the EU who hates them rather bitterly, uh, bitterly already. Uh, and again, you don't know what's going to happen. It was just like uh, Microsoft's uh, action back in 2000. It came out of the blue, and Microsoft was down 30%. You're going to get something like that. Is it this year? I think it could be. I think we know that those um, investigations have been moving along now for almost two years. Uh, and there's more than enough uh, crime uh, to go around for those folks. And uh, well, they lied to Congress. So I think you've got, you know, a handful. Amazon probably a little bit better 
protected uh, in that their business is a little bit more transparent, uh, about as transparent as the CEO, if you want to call him a transparent weasel. Uh, but uh, that's about it. There's not that much going on. Anyway, uh, you're breaking these highs. Do I think you could get up there with light volume to 2050 on Amazon? I think the answer is yes. Uh, Facebook just continues to uh, tell everybody one thing, lie about it, and do the opposite, which, of course, makes a lot of money in the short term, uh, but is highly problematic. Uh, we're back in to the previous high on Facebook uh, that had uh, 54 million shares with 10 million shares today. And if you want to go back and look at this gap down on July 26th of last year, that had 170 million shares with 10 million shares. Um, is it going to break? The energy was not all that bad off the lows. But again, my guess is that um, both Amazon and uh, Apple and Facebook all could walk, you could wake up one day and find that the feds have opened a antitrust case on them and make it very tough for them to continue on doing one thing and saying yet another. Uh, okay. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, da, 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 da. American Financial Group. As again, we were looking at a lot of these stocks. Um, I see a lot of financials up at the high and on light volume. So we'll see how these go after the last or in the next couple of days. Uh, yesterday, you had uh, 285,000 shares above the May 2nd high at 104.54. That added 600,000 shares. Um, we also have a little action in the biotech space. Align Technology actually makes uh, those clear braces for kids. Um, actually, one of the better-looking stocks, although I wish it had a little less volume coming off uh, the June 10th high. But uh, back in the trading range above 272.60, which was the May 31st low, uh, again with 2.5 million shares, up today, though, on just 573,000 shares. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, Amera Nature Foods, ANFI. I don't know a lot about this company, uh, but it uh, looks like it's coming back into some level. If you're looking at penny stocks, it's a port around 70 cents. ANFI. Will you? back. I'm back in the saddle again. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Yeah, yeah. What a laundry list of uh, of people involved in New York on this Epstein thing. I wonder how many uh, will actually uh, get a pass from those folks in New York because they're big in politics. Uh, but you never know. Eh, you get the best money that uh, best laws that uh, money can buy occasionally. This looks like one of the issues. Okay, um, some of the other ones that tell me that we're at an inflection point if we don't get the news that the market wants tomorrow. Builders are first choice. BLDR, uh, 1 million shares yesterday uh, into the high of May 8th, $16.94. That's 3 million shares back on that May 8th high. Yesterday, you really just had 700,000 shares and back into the trading range. Energy is about the same on the way up as on the way down. I want to see a lot of stocks that went up on very light volume. And even things like Delta Airlines with the earnings coming in soon uh, for that still haven't rang the bell on the previous high. Uh, for Delta Airlines, it's the November 30th high at $61.32 with 11 million shares. Uh, <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, DIN. I looked at this earlier this morning. Um, Dine uh, Brands Global, D-I-N's the symbol on this one. And um, let's find out. I want to know exactly which ones they have. But this one may have the best uh, candle reversal signal yesterday of ones that I had seen. Uh, a lot of restaurants, uh, Applebee's, IHOP, uh, Applebee's na Neighborhood, Grill, International House of Pancakes. I guess they got a whole bunch of them. Um, changed its name in 2018 to Dine Brands Global. Been around since 1958. Well, um, Certainly went after the previous high that had 600,000 shares on February 25th with uh, 390,000 shares. So eh, not quite 60, 65 percent of the volume. Uh, came right back down, though, on a little lighter volume yesterday, right back into the trading range. And again, this one had enough of a, a light volume move from that May 1st low that you kind of knew that when it rang the bell, it was going to turn around. I don't see a huge downside in it just yet. Uh, Darden Restaurants, again, on the restaurant theme of seeing these, actually had some decent volume going into its previous high. That's 124.45. That's the May 21st high with 1.7 million shares. Uh, on uh, Monday, you had 1.86 million shares up to that high. You spiked it today and reversed back down with 740,000 shares. So it's kind of close. Again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648, or you can email me at path at tfnn.com. What else do we have? Health, HTH, which is uh, Hilltop Holdings. Uh, 
$21.59. That's a 1.8 million share high. Um, very light volume last couple of days, uh, less than 200,000 shares on Friday. Yesterday, 339,000. Today, 228,000 with a little bit of a doji out here. Uh, as we said, earnings coming up in uh, about eight, nine days for a lot of these uh, broker dealers. JP Morgan, uh, the energy about the same on the way up. Uh, as on the way down to the uh, May 31st low at 104.10. This got kind of close, uh, but uh, 116.33 is that April 29th high, and any kind of good news tomorrow probably takes it back up there. Uh, one of some of the car uh, areas that look the weakest uh, is also uh, the car business. Uh, I'm watching this one for a pop possible uh, double repo pattern. Um, this one's had a, a, a kind of the best look at one and what we are looking for more of. It worked very well in May, and that is that you get 10 to 15 days above a three by three displaced moving average or a nine day moving average, a couple of days below it, which you got, handful of days above it, and then the next close below it is the key uh, to that. Now, tomorrow, um, we get some negative news. I suspect you're going to run right back down to 80 bucks on this fairly quickly. You had a June 21st high at 88.64 with 10.4 million shares compared to the high on Friday, June 5th, um, with just 1.2 million, 1.3 million shares. Uh, again, not a lot of juice off that June 24th low. You got the pull back and you got the key to that today. If it continues tomorrow, I'd say it's one of the weaker stocks at highs that I've seen. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Uh, Lattice Semiconductor, the uh, semis uh, right up at the highs, but again, not much in the way of volume. May 1st, you spiked $14.93 in LSCC. Did so with 4.8 million shares. Got into it today with 2.1 million shares so far. Uh, when we look at Marriott International, uh, it broke above its previous high with just basically the same volume. I went sideways for a handful of days. It's back into the trading range. Now, this one had uh, much weaker volume off the May 31st low. So you're kind of into that. But a lot of these um, looking for one more pull above a three by three or nine day moving average. And then the next side down, uh, if I wouldn't speculate until it does it, uh, but I certainly would say those would be the more bearish ones. Pulling the trigger here is probably a little bit problematic. Uh, to, to what do we have? MetLife, M-E-T, um, eh, 6.5 million shares on May 21st, $50.40, uh, 2.3 million shares uh, two days ago on Friday. Uh, so you got into there, well, about a million shares light. Uh, you're back into the trading range. The big thing is just how light the energy was off this June 3rd low. Uh, other stocks of interest to me is Northrop Grumman. Uh, this one has tested the June 10th high, $323.73 with a million shares. Yesterday, you had 377,000 shares as you spiked over that high, but closed back below it. Today, you're going sideways on 266,000 shares. Netgear, um, one of the stocks I've been looking for that may have some kind of floor in here if things turn up. NTGR is the symbol on this one, the maker of routers for home users. And then just going sideways out here at highs, of course, a good sign of distribution at lows, a good sign of accumulation. If this continues new skin bouncing around the forty five, forty four dollar level, looking at support. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Wrap up the show, the shoe, and then uh, we'll get on. And of course, tomorrow we'll be in it in the thick of it. Mr. Powell doing his dance on the catwalk.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we were talking about new skin out here bouncing around the lows today, uh, 242,000 shares. Uh, the low came in at uh, to, 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 to 44.55, so you still got another 50 cents to go into this spike back on March 25th that had 44.02, but 1.8 my uh, million shares compared to the 242,000 shares. So we're watching some of the fruit uh, start to uh, to uh, ripen on the vine if things go our way. Uh, question about IBM: They closed. Uh, their acquisition of Red Hat today, so it's official. Uh, probably make uh, their earnings look a little bit better, at least flatter, going forward. Um, I don't know if it'll end up being a great deal or not. Uh, down a little bit today, but that may be for other things. Again, probably just in a bigger trading range or around 145 back to about 125, uh, and I don't see that changing any time soon. A uh, question about Twitter, TWTR. Um, again, these things, uh, uh, a lot of stocks are like this with uh, slightly uh, higher lows and lower highs. Uh, if we get a real big bounce uh, higher on these, uh, then you will have busted through these bigger triangle patterns uh, in a lot of these stocks. 
And if you get any kind of downturn, that generally is also a fairly good sign that you've got a high in. Um, but that's about it. Um, looking at a lot of stocks, a handful of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe it's a couple of days. Maybe it's not. But again, the market is very good at doing one thing, and that's getting you to act before you get the signal. And we need to wait for those signal. Sit on your hands. Wait for the whites of their eyes. But I think that's probably coming tomorrow. So we shall see exactly what Mr. Powell has up his sleeve. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.